Okay, over to you, Jeff. Jeffrey. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. And there's Frank. Frank is joining us from Santa Barbara today for the last step. Actually, it looks like you're still in Mexico with the decor in your house there, Frank. But uh, It's all one place. <laughs> looks like Casa Quantico. Yeah, it's good to have you, and it's good to see the rest of you guys up there. Saw Helena and Patrick and Luce, and yeah, it's really good to feel connected with you all. So yeah, today uh, we wanted to talk about a few things. The last time we were on, we talked about the fourth step that, uh, you know, we both came from 12-step recovery to A Course in Miracles, and that's kind of what the show is about, you know, how we can live in this this constant state of joy, the miracle, you know, and in, in, uh, in 12 step, they call it the fourth dimension. And it was funny last night I was, I was praying and I remember the story of a guy who, uh, he had like 27 years of recovery and came up to me in the room. He's like, man, you're awful happy. And this was, this was a couple of years, three years ago. And, and I said, yeah. And he goes, well, how long, how long you've been, you know, sober. And I said, uh, I said for a couple of years and he said, oh, Give it, give it a couple more years. You'll come back to reality. And I was like, oh. God, I hope not. <laughs> like, God, I really hope not. So that was kind of the inspiration around this show was to share some of the experiences we've had through the 12 steps and still use them actually in our everyday lives and, you know, how they relate to the course and, and so forth. So I was reading a, uh, I was kind of praying and sometimes I'll just go through the index and look at the titles and just wait for a, you know, a section title to hit me. And, I was looking through in the way to remember God in chapter 12, you know, really struck me. And I, so I read it. And once I get a section like that, I'll read it for a few days. And the very last paragraph was, uh, was really great for me. And basically these few lines and it says, uh, we are therefore embarking on an organized, well-structured and carefully planned program aimed at learning how to offer to the Holy Spirit everything you do not want. He knows what to do with it. You do not understand how to use what he knows. Whatever is given him that is not of God is gone. And when I read that, I was like, certainly the word program, you know, shot out to me because coming from a 12 step and not really associating with any particular one anymore, we always call it the program and it was always like, Hey, are you working a good program? You know, are you actually living the steps in your life? Are you practicing the principles in all your affairs? And to think like when I read this, it was like, this is actually what we're doing. Even the course of miracles is a program for us to practice this offering, you know, because we want to hold on or I want to hold on to these things in the practice of, you know, letting them go. And last week or whatever it was two or three weeks ago. Now we talked about the fourth step, which is, the spiritual principle is courage, you know, to look within. And it says we took, you know, it calls it a moral and fearless moral inventory of ourselves, looking at the things we think we've done wrong and so forth. And when I read this and, you know, I actually didn't get to join with Frank too much, but we talked a bit and I said, you know, it makes sense to actually move into the next couple of steps. And when I did them originally, the fifth step is actually admitted to God, to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Again, they use the word wrongs here, but when we're in Course of Miracles terms, we don't want to get caught up with the, the terminology because at where the mind's at, we actually think we're doing things wrong or think all the things that we've done in the wreckage of our past are actually things that are, yeah, are wrong. And I remember when I actually did that step, it was the first, and in, in the book, you know, the 12-step book, it actually talks about this is the first experience we'll have of you know, God, a, a sense of belonging after we unleash all of these secrets, really, you know, it's, we've had this, this, you know, basically our practice, our habit was keeping everything locked down and not sharing anything. And, you know, there's a, there's a good uh, metaphor I'll, I'll share, which I'll explain the other couple of steps at this, you know, this little process when, you know, when it says here, carefully plan program aimed at learning how to offer to the Holy Spirit everything I do not want. And so after we do the fifth step, immediately, like we have this full, you know, and part of the book actually says to share your whole life story. And it's really more to see the patterns and things, but certain things, the one question that everyone asks is, what would you not want to tell me? What would you take to your grave? And we start there. And then we see, you know, what else comes out. After that is the sixth step, which is we were entirely ready 
to have him remove all our defects of character. Again, let's not get caught up with the words defects of character. But the spiritual principle of that step is willingness. And it's just a matter of I'm willing to let go of all these things that I actually held. These are the protections, the defenses, all the things that I've used to keep in place to hold this darkness, this self-concept, whatever, in place. And then we have the seventh step, which is the spiritual principle is humility. And it's we're entirely ready to have him remove all of our shortcomings. You can see the words are actually changing. It goes from wrongs to character defects to shortcomings. And then eventually the book actually starts talking about mistakes, mistakes. So we can actually correct, you know, there are errors that we can correct as we know, studying the Course of Miracles. So those three steps are a huge part. They actually write books just about six and seven because there are only two paragraphs in the 12 step book that I went through. And there's so much to it. There's so much to this process of actually letting go of this because we're finding value in it somewhere. So I have to actually, because for me, letting go of certain ones that actually affected my life was easy. But when it was the things that didn't really glaringly affect my life, they were affecting my mind. I had to look deeper to let those things go. And there's this metaphor that they, uh, you know, that someone uses at one of the groups I used to go to. And it was like, so in the fourth step, we actually go into our house and we actually look at all the dirty secrets and we have to go all the way down into the basement, all the things that we left down there from childhood, all these resentments, fears, sexual misconducts, or things that we think we've done wrong. And we actually have to look at them ourselves and put them on paper in that step. And the fifth step, which we're talking about today, is we bring someone else into our house. We bring someone else in and show them all this stuff and say, hey, look at what I've been living with for this long. And then the sixth step is actually we call the, uh, we call the garbage man to bring a dumpster over to our house. So the willingness to take these things and actually throw them out in the dumpster. I loved when the guy used to say this. And this is just a willingness step. We're actually not doing anything here. It's like we put them out there and then it's actually the seventh step. We were entirely ready. So now we call and say, okay, you can pick this up. You can take it, actually offering it to spirit to take it away. Because I can be ready, think I'm ready, leave it out in the garage and, or out in the dumpster. And then three days later, go back and take one of these resentments back and bring it back into my house, you know? So this is the practice, you know? And I love how it says in this, this section that it was a carefully, we have a carefully planned program aimed at learning. I have to learn how to do this because it's not natural to me. I have to learn how to, First of all, look within and see what it is. Share it with another person, God and another human being. It's the practice of exposing. That's actually what we do here in community. You know, we do this very rapidly. You know, things come up and it's like we have expression sessions and we share it. Then we offer it and we call it altar sessions. You saw, if you were on earlier, you saw Calico's show where they, she did body shaming around the pool. It was really beautiful. It's like offering up all these things that we're holding on to and then offering to spirit to really to take them away. So anyway, that's kind of the uh, the steps I wanted to talk about, and I have a few uh, few stories around it. But I wanted to hear from Frank in Santa Barbara. Looking good up there, Frank. <laughs> so yeah, I I you know it's a good thing you you, um, you know it says in uh, in that uh, text also he knows what to do with it because I think a lot of um, a, a lot of the mistake with the program is that you know there's so much guilt and there's so much um you know you hear things like you know uh this it's like a saying it says you don't have to change anything but you have to change it also you just have to change everything about yourself and, and that that really um you know the way it's said and you know <laughs> you've been there it can be kind of a little bit condescending and it, it, it takes, um, uh, you know, it, it can bring up guilt. But really, I don't have to change anything in the sense that it says there. You know, I just have to offer it. And then there's that sentence, uh, he knows what to do with it. And, you know, you were talking about, uh, um, you know, the program and working the program. You, you hear that word a lot. And, he, and for me, for the longest time, I thought, Working the program means to now be good, you know, and to not do these things and to, you know, so, so, so there's a, there's this, um, um, you know, misconception I had for years that I have, to, you know, now I expose my character defects. 
Now I got to change it. Now I have to fight them. You know, now I really have to, 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 um, uh, to be good, you know, and you hear it sometimes. People share, you know, I'm, I'm sick of this program. I'm sick of being good. And you know, that's, that's not what you have to do. You, and so it's much more subtle. We just need to expose it and then, and then have the willingness to, to, to allow it to be removed, you know, and, um, and do nothing. And it's something, you know, David, when I came uh, to Mexico, one of the first things he said, you don't have to do anything. You just need to show up. You know, you need to show up. And by showing up, I heal. See, and the healing takes care of it. But the healing has to be, has to really be in step 11 in the, in the conscious contact. It's just the, the, the humility uh, in six and seven and the willingness, those are the keys, you know. We, we let people, like you say, we let people in the house and we let them see it. And it's great in, in uh, you know, in Costa because most people, nobody's shocked about anything anybody has done because we've seen it all, you know. And, um, and so, and, and I feel it's the same, um, you know, in, in the, you know, in the community that when I bring up stuff, well, yeah, you know, that's, it's just what it is. So, so that shame, it uh, goes away very fast once once it's exposed. But the important thing is that we you know have to have the trust that it will be removed, and it will be removed um, in the time that it's supposed to be removed. And that's why I really like this this sentence where it says, "He knows what to do with it. Mm. I don't have to get rid of it myself, and I can't, you know." Um, for me, because of my experience, I can't emphasize that enough because I thought, I tried to fight these things, you know, these impulses like anger. I mean, try to fight anger. It does not work. It's just going to come back worse, you know. I always talk about the spring, you know, holding the spring. I can't get angry. I can't get angry. Imagine what that does. It's like, you know, and then I, I just explode. So... So that's, that's, you know, I always say in Costa, it, people say it's an action program. And it is to a point, but that can be misunderstood, you know. Action, I mean, because we come in and, you know, we're, we're lost, so they tell us, put the toothpaste, put the, you know, the toothpaste that make your bed and all these things. And action, 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 you know, be of service. And then there comes the action, do nothing. Do nothing, you know. Mm. And that's the hardest action you can ask, uh, uh, you know, somebody with an addiction to, 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 to have. It's just, yeah. And let the healing, you know, let the healing uh, um, place and trust, trust that it will happen. And I cannot trust something I don't know. So, you know, it talks about higher power and God and, you know, so well, I, I, I have to get to the point. This is not an entity that's outside of me that I'm praying to from down here. And it's going to, you know, I have to make that contact. And it's always linked to step 11 for me. I have to make that contact. Because if I don't, I can't, I, I need to have that trust to, to allow this to happen. You know, Absolutely. You say, uh... You say that that line of, you know, he knows what to do with it. And it's funny, there's this other, I forget, I had heard this somewhere too. And it's even this idea of, you know, trying to control the healing because I've, I tried it and it was, it was torture, you know, at the beginning. It's funny, we have, uh, we have a, a mighty companion that's here now that just recently came and facing a bunch of intensity. And when I think about this part of it, it's this actual, I heard this actually, this analogy or metaphor in, in a room as well and it was like so we've been driving the car our whole life and just throwing the garbage in the back like everything that we've been going through we just throw it in the back of the car and then when we come to this point of we're ready to question or heal we slam the brakes and all that stuff comes rushing up to the front of the car and it's like it's overwhelming it's like we're in touch with this deep you know separation all this stuff and it's like i've done so much wrong and it's like it's so fearful at that point where it's like what you're saying is, you know, with this, he knows what to do with it. It's actually not even hitting the brakes. It's like letting him take the wheel 
and just finally just step, stepping aside and the stuff, he'll just slow the car down very slowly and the things will come up. And as they come up, then I can face them and not really into littering, but throw them out the window and you know, start, start facing those things as they come up. I can't control it, you know? And it's funny because those two little paragraphs, it's funny, the last one of step six says, if we still cling to something we will not let go of, we ask God to help us be willing because it's really not us. We just have to ask for that willingness. And what I love is there's a seventh step prayer in the 12 step uh, book that I read. And it's my creator. It's right here. My creator, I'm now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I mean, the prayer in the book actually says that. So it's, it starts at step seven. We start to move away from this idea of wrongs to any of these things. It's like, I give you everything, good and bad. I'm now willing that you shall have all of me. I pray that you now remove from me every single defective character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. This is nothing more than, you know, what would you have me do prayer over and over. And when I have these jealousies or angers or all these fears or resentments, when I have those block my way, I can't be useful. So that's always why our prayer is in every moment. How can I be useful? Because that takes me out of self and it takes me towards this this process of healing that we talked about and the way to remember God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's that it's just, it just requires willingness, you know, willingness and trust. And, and, um, and so, um, uh, the, the, you know, the, the way it works when, when, you know, when I'm in the community and, and now I'm not, now I'm, I'm out in the big wild world. And, um, it's, uh, you know, it's that mind train. It's the mind train. Because once you start, once I started really looking, you know, I've done the, the, the you know, I've been in, in, in the process for uh, uh, 34 years now, and I've done a lot of the work, but the work that I'm doing now, it goes a lot deeper. And, um, and it's interesting because it's not, Okay, sit down and look at your, uh, even though it says in the course, you know, you have to go down, you have to go in there and, and look at it, you know, bring it up. The, the, you know, Jesus says in the course, I cannot, don't ask me to take your fears away, just like that. And I was, you know, for a long time, I just said, okay, take it. Why are you not taking it? You know, why are you not taking it? This is not working. This is not working. I, I, the prayer is not answered, but I didn't realize how much I, I, I still had to expose and how much I was still hanging on to um, in, in, you know, uh, because, because it cannot be removed if I still want it. You know, that's, that's just the nature, that's the spiritual nature of it. Um, he will not take something I don't want to give. You know, because that would be interfering with my will. So, so the the so I have to really be honest. What do I want? You know, and and the course also says, you know, everything you're seeing and experiencing is because you want it. And um, and so going deep down in there, seeing, you know, and stirring up, uh, um, like like hitting the brake and having all this garbage come forward is, um, you know, what, what I love with Living Miracles, it's just being, it's, it's being done automatically through the system of how we all work together and with the movies. For me, the movies work really well because it can bring up shame, it can bring up uh, uh, a sadness, it can bring up anger, and then you know, then I, I can really look at it. And what's very important uh, for me as a, as a tool is once this stuff comes up, I don't know what to do with it, you know? And so before I thought I have to intellectualize, okay, this is anger, I gotta do that, I gotta do this with the anger, or this is sadness, and, and it's not like that. I don't have to figure it out. I can just say, look, there it is. I feel horrible right now, I feel wide open. Just have it now. You can go in. Go in. He says, you know, you got to let me in there and I'll take the lantern. I even hold your hand, but you got to go in there and look. 
So, so that's the willingness. The willingness is, is to say, okay, there's still a lot of darkness in the subconscious. Let's go in there and, 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 um, and expose it. And it's very uh, um, clear when the time is the right thing to say, okay, now it's there. Uh, the other day I was really, it was funny, I was really angry at someone who did, you know, on my ranch and he did something I told him not to do, he did it, you know. And I found out just before I go into the dentist and I thought, oh, yeah, I got oh, 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 my phone and I went, and then I said, okay, you know, I just have to sit with that anger. And I, oh, <laughs> you know, I have all these tools in my mouth and there's nothing I could do. And I actually started feeling palpitations here. It's interesting. I never allow, you know, I never allow myself to feel the anger this deeply, but I was pinned in the chair, so I couldn't do anything. Uh, because usually what would I do? I would uh, call and say, you know, this is not okay, but then I would get really angry. And then somehow my ego would be satisfied with that, take the anger, and push it back down again, you know? And, um, you know, and it's the same with, it's, it's kind of the same with everything, with anything. But then it was like, oh, there it is, I'm there with my mouth open and they're cleaning my teeth and said, take it, it's there, it's there. And I kept feeling it, like, oh, this, this is becoming unbearable. This is nothing I can do. And then eventually it just went away. And I, I know there was a lot of anger being cleared up in that moment. So, you know, it's just do nothing, feel the feeling and offer it, offer it to spirit because now it's there and now the wound is open. And the wound of anger is super unpleasant because what is the impulse is the impulse to go and act on it and say, you know, and, and, and this is where, when, you say, when you're really angry, you got to, uh, uh, you know, express it. But, but most people, or me anyway, will express it by, by uh, you know, by, by screaming at the person. And they say, well, now I express it. But it is, that doesn't do anything because that all it does, it satisfies the ego. And then, and then, you know, the thing shuts down again and the anger is back in the subconscious. So the, the um, it, it's, I, it's a long-winded explanation to say, you know, I, I learned to feel the feeling and as it's, it's there, I offer it. And there's the cleanse, you know, there's, and there's a definite cleanse because I felt so much better for the rest of the day because something has healed. So this is the healing that, that, that we do in community, you know, that just bring it up, bring it up, don't, don't hold back and, and um, and, and this is great because now I'm in Santa Barbara, I'm not in community, but I can still do it. Mm. Yeah, it becomes a practice. And as yeah. you were speaking, I mean, it's the same thing. Every time these things come up, the pause, you know, the miracle is the pause, you know, and in the 12 step book, it says, when agitated, we pause. And there's this constant prayer of thy will be done to help me remember. But it's like funny because I've taken those things and now it's actually spirit, you know, and it's like, Anytime there's any type of, and this is what I do in the morning. First thing I wake up and I go downstairs and I sit for an hour and I just actually scan my mind for any type of thing, like anything that rises up that is any type of irritation or something I took from the last day. And, and I allow that to come up and then I take it through the process. You know what I mean? It's like, there's no minor disturbances either. So any type of frustration or whatever it is, and I take it through because you said, you know, it's, it's based on I'm keeping it is because of what I want. So I actually have to get down into the lower level of desire. And these first, you know, three steps, we're at the point where we're going through the humility is actually offering it up, you know, the belief when we get to the belief level. But it's not until I get in touch with that desire that oh, I actually want something to be different. And it's holding in place one of these things that we're talking about. It's like, for some reason, I have these defenses built up and it's all based in this guilt. But through these steps, we're allowed to hit the brakes and allow, you know, rather gradually, we'd rather that approach, but we allow these things to come up so that we can actually see why we desire them. A lot of times the prayer is with, you know, I'm joining with the ones in my house, which is Susanna and Peter now. And a lot of times it's like, 
the prayer is, let me just see where I value this. Like, why am I valuing whatever it is? And I noticed the other uh, this morning, actually, I had a last minute request for something on the shows. And I noticed this anger come up and I expressed it. I was with Peter and Suzanne and I expressed it immediately. And then it was like, okay, I got this coming up and let me pray. And it's really, I could see in my mind that it was, it wasn't even what was asked. It was actually, I had already intended on doing it because I can people please. And I can do that. I intended on doing it because there was an obligation. There was a responsibility. All those things were played in so quickly that it, like the anger rose up and I was like, no, it's like, pray, what do you actually feel to do? And then of course they came up and they shared, oh, I, I know it's last minute. And I shared my thoughts and okay, let's try to do this this way. But it's always based in this expectation and assumption. We watched that movie last night and that was the one thing that you know, really struck me. We watched that every day that we watched at Casa Quantico. And even in a relationship like that, where the girl, like it was a different body every day, you know, this, the form changed, but there was still expectation. You know, there was still this, oh, I expect somebody to show up tomorrow. And anytime there's an expectation, I can assure you that behind that, there's some kind of, you know, the disturbance, there is a desire underneath it. So it's like, yeah, to be able to do that and pause in those moments to allow that process to take place is really what, you know, five, six, and seven are about in, in the 12 step program. Yeah, and the pause yeah. sometimes can be, but pause sometimes has to be a long time, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. just pulling over the car and, uh, and, and, and just sit there. You know, I get a lot of, uh, I get really triggered by, by, um, like stuff on the road, you know, people like go, or just people pushing me out or cutting me off and things like that. And um, and there's that real um, that real uh, uh, tendency to want to step on the gas and <laughs> go and punish, you know. And um, and 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 it goes. I, I don't know what it is for me that that triggers me so much, but I guess you know I just feel like somebody. So I'm, I'm not being seen. Somebody's trying to take my my spot. You know, it's probably something I acted out already as a kid. I know it's not probably. It's it's what happened, and it comes in in that um, you know in that uh, uh, instance uh, when, when I'm driving. I don't know when I'm driving. It it, it really um, it, it really it comes to be very strong uh, with people I don't even know. But, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it, you know, the halt, when, when I was saying, saying the halt, you know, when I'm agitated and paused, I, I always thought, you know, it's just a few seconds, but sometimes I have to take my, a, a really long time and observe mm -hmm. exactly, because then it goes away and whoops, there it's again, you know, and so, so I, I have to, to take the time to do it. Um, you know, the, the, I mean, what follows afterwards, what I really uh, is, is uh, you know, that we have eight and nine, and then we have 10, where we continuously to take inventory of ourselves. And like, like you, I don't like these words very much, you know, that they, <laughs> they use the steps like shortcomings and inventory and, and the word moral and all this. But, um, but that's what's so beautiful about, about, the course, you know, it brings a different language into it. And so we yeah. can it, uh, Sure is. We're yeah. running out of time here, Frank. Yeah. But uh, yeah, actually, when you were. Exciting. Yeah. The, <laughs> well, our, our new. Our new direction, we may, uh, you know, have a longer show, the two of us. We'll see what happens. But the um, it's funny, as you were talking at the end there, when you're talking about even you were talking about the driving and like this tendency to want to hit that's actually what happens in my mind like when i hit the brakes or and all this stuff comes up the tendency want to just mash the gas and take off and put all that stuff back and you know and you know, we call that a runner <laughs> like we want to come we face stuff and then we want to take off but it's really to let go of the wheel and you know allow spirit to take over but uh yeah, and I don't know if there's a glitch in the matrix, but I think the same cat has walked by like seven times in your house. I don't know how he's getting back no, to the other true. room. It's true. Those are Emma's cats. And they're, okay. cats. <laughs> they're both. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's one. a good reminder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I told him not to, to bother me during the show. But... <laughs> <laughs>
All right. So thank you so much, Frank. Well, uh, I think the next time we're on, you may be in France. So you'll be yes. zooming well, in from I'm France. Switzerland, Switzerland, probably. I'm going okay. To yeah. All right. Well, that's about, about the time we have. So, Frank, we'll, we'll see you soon and see all you guys out there in another couple of weeks. We have another set of shows next week, but I'll be, uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Oh, there's everyone. Hmm.